So good morning and welcome to this session, An Insight and Idea, with the Head of Government of the Second Tunisian Republic, Mr. Habib Asit. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Nadine Hani. I present the business news on Al Arabiya News Channel. And it is my pleasure and my honor to be here with you today. Thank you for attending. And thank you, Mr. Rasid, for agreeing to sit with us for a one-on-one -on -one to discuss your vision for Tunisia five years after the revolution. Uh, a log logistical note, uh, we're going to do this discussion in Arabic. So if you would like to listen to the translation, there is simultaneous translation, obviously. Welcome to you, Prime Minister. You recently created your second government, and you are putting in place the last touches of the five-year economic plan. What are the main points in this plan, and what are the directions the government will take? First of all, I'd like to say that this is not the second government. Uh, there was a change in the government. As you said, we are putting in place the main direction for Tunisia for 2016 to 2020. We prepared a document which was discussed at all different levels. And we have now moved on to putting in place the five-year plan 2016-2020. We have created uh, sectoral committees and committees for the various regions which have completed the first phases of the work. And uh, currently, we are in almost the final phase of this plan. And we are discussing it with the various sectors and regions of the country so that uh, we will be able to present a bill to Parliament that uh, it can agree to before we move on to implementation. Could you give us the main points of this plan? Those present with us today would like to know what the future direction of Tunisia will be on various levels, on the economic level, obviously, but uh, also the direction your government will take because there are probably directions of action in various sectors and for other levels, not just the economy. Tunisia went through important political developments. There was a popular uprising, which led to the removal of the past president, and democracy was ushered into Tunisia, and this for a variety of reasons. The young people who revolted on from the 17th of December 2010 to the 14th of January 2011 had many demands. And these demands were in on two levels, the freedom of expression, the freedom of the media, and the second group of demands were of an economic nature, and some of the internal regions of the country were in a very difficult position, and this is what led to the uprising. So first, we had a political transition. We moved from a dictatorship to a democracy. And we have almost finished this transition. Are you satisfied with the political transition? Yes, of course I am. I think that all of the foundations for the creation of a democracy in the country are in place now. We have a constitution, which was agreed to by consensus in the Constitutional Assembly. And we are in the process of implementing the constitution. We have a parliament, which was elected democratically and with transparency. We have a president who was also elected democratically and with transparency as the Constitution calls for. And there is a government, it's a coalition government of parties represented in Parliament, which uh, obtained an absolute majority, first on the 5th of February 2015, and uh, then after the change of ministers. Obviously, many different issues had to be worked out, which were stated in the Constitution. And the role of this government 
is to implement the consti constitutional constitution. We have a constitutional uh, court now, and we're satisfied with that. That has to do with the political level. We consider that Tunisia is a young democracy now, and the political work was obviously necessary, but uh, there are many demands having to do with the economy. So to answer your question about uh, the orientations of this government, economically speaking, A document which was put in place which outlines the main points of the future orientation of the Tunisian economy there's one point I would like to insist upon which is the following we have put in place a model for development and the plan which was in place for the last 23 years wasn't successful, so the idea is to put in place a new plan. We will concentrate on the regions, the provinces. Which provinces? There are provinces in the interior of the country which were neglected in the past, and it is essential that uh, these regions no longer be neglected, that attention be paid to them. And the Constitution, in one of its sections, says that there should be affirmative action for these regions. So you're talking about the development of the regions and, uh, yes, especially some of the regions, there are 14 of them, which uh, did not get their share of development, so we will concentrate on them as a priority. Also, we will concentrate on social equality, because there is disparity between the various uh, provinces and regions, so one of the foundations of our plan is social development. We also want Tunisia to not only be a place that foreign investors are attracted to because wages and costs are low, we would like it to be a hub for development. Especially for North Africa and Africa in general. How? The problem is that everyone wants to achieve these goals. If you look at all of the Arab countries, if you were to ask the leaders there what they want for the economy, everybody talks about inclusive growth, which is growth which includes all segments of society and to develop the various regions and provinces. But the question is how, especially in the context of the security challenges, could you outline for me the economic strategy to achieve these goals? Of course, there are orientations, but we also have mechanisms to achieve these goals. When it comes to the regions, let me give you an example to make things clearer. I talked about affirmative action. And in the consultations between the regions, we put in place indicators. The Ministry of Development put in place indicators based on which we can distribute investments based on levels of development in each region and the differences between them. So this is how we will choose projects and assign them to various regions in the country. I talked about our new development plan and I said that we want Tunisia to become a plan, a, a hub, sorry, for the region. We have abilities and we have resources. As an example, when it comes to digital technologies, because we have many goals related to the digitalization of the economy and concentrating on IT, we have 
a great deal of capabilities. When it comes to information technology, we think we will be able to create at least 50,000 jobs in IT in the next five years. And there is a plan to do that. Obviously, this plan is part of the larger five-year plan. So we will concentrate on that sector. And there's another sector we want to concentrate on, which is renewable energy. We have a great deal of resources in that sector in Tunisia. And there's coordination between Tunisia and the EU to link Tunisia to the European Union and to transfer our renewable energy to Europe. So there are uh, projects which have been identified and included in our future development plan. We will also concentrate on all of the sectors, the private sector, the public sector, and the social sector. And these are things which were not included in previous plans. Uh, I could give you many examples, but it would take too long. But those are the main orientations. I have a question. Your government, and this is a very good thing, has the approval of the various uh, parties in government. It's a coalition government, and that's a very good thing. And it is positive when it comes to making reforms. But there is still a problem which many of the countries of the region face, which is the vested interests. So do you think that you can push these plans through Parliament and implement them and be able to get by these vested interests? We, there are many steps before Parliament. The document I talked about was obviously put in place after consultations within the coalition, which is made up of four political parties. But we widen the consultations because without dialogue, we can't push it through Parliament. All reforms, all orientations are based on dialogue first. And we hope that very soon there will be a day in Parliament when this document will be discussed within the Parliament, between all the parties, before we start implementation. Tunisia, uh, its quartet uh, received the Nobel Prize, so our experience is unique, and I think that that will help us to achieve our aims. But there must be dialogue, direct dialogue, first, before we do anything between all of the parties, between all of the organizations, with civil society, and all of the national organizations which play an important and essential role in our choices. We would like to congratulate you on the Nobel Prize, and this is why the international community is uh, getting very interested in Tunisia and its future. But there's still the elephant in the room, uh, says uh, the presenter in English, which is the security situation after the attacks in Bardo and Sousse. And it uh, is estimated that tourism revenue will decline by 45% in 2015. And uh, this will also, the situation will impede international investment. So what is your strategy to counter terrorism? In February 2015, we took on many challenges when my government was created. The most important challenge is the security challenge. And the second one is the social challenge. And the third is the economic challenge, which we just discussed. And uh, I talked about Tunisia's uh, choices and orientations when it comes to the economy. When it comes to the security challenge, it was one of uh, the priorities of this government. The situation was difficult. And a preliminary plan was put in place to fight terrorism, which includes defense and attack. And obviously, we consulted with the security organizations and uh, the armed forces. 
as you know, three terrorist attacks were carried out in Tunisia, and they had an extremely negative impact on the tourism sector, which is of the utmost importance in Tunisia, because it employs uh, 400,000 people and represents 11 percent of uh, GDP. Immediate measures were taken, of course. Because uh, obviously terrorism has a direct impact on tourism, on the direct jobs in tourism. And of course, there are people employed indirectly in arts and crafts, for example, traditional crafts and other sectors. I think that our tourism sector is on a crossroads right now. And we're carrying out reform. It needs to be updated, doesn't it? Yes, and we're carrying out deep reforms, which are necessary. Our tourism sector was created in the 60s, and we have uh, experience, obviously, in this sector. And we would like to make use of this situation to carry out reforms. How? Diversification. We want to diversify tourism because we concentrated mainly on our beaches and on coastal tourism. So we would like to diversify. We have uh, cultural resources that are not being utilized in the best manner in tourism. So diversification, bring in cultural tourism, environmental tourism, all of these things will be integrated in the future plan, which will be part of the 2016-2025-year uh, plan. There are circumstantial measures which have been taken to uh, support tourism so that we will be able to get past this very difficult situation affecting uh, tourism and the economy in general. One of the main economic challenges is what happened in the sector of phosphates and in industry. Many companies have moved their factories to other countries or have started investing in other countries in North Africa. Yes, that's true. How will you be able to attract investments into this sector and how will you deal with uh, worker strikes in your country? that uh, have impeded uh, and sometimes stopped work in the factories. You have the second largest phosphate industries industry in the world. It is true that at the beginning of 2015, the factories stopped working, especially in uh, February and March 2015, because of various factors, social factors, political factors and uh, therefore the production of phosphates stopped for two months in Tunisia. But thanks to dialogue, thanks to coordination between the various political parties and national organizations we will be able to we were able to get back on track and uh, we reached an acceptable production level at the end of this year there were some circumstantial problems in the phosphate sector and some other sectors and all of the planned investments in phosphate production and uh, chemical products related to phosphates are back on track. And uh, phosphates are being sold again on international markets. Obviously, the transitional period had an impact. And uh, some investments didn't go to Tunisia, but to other countries. But we have a great deal of uh, experience in the production of phosphates and uh, the chemical products extracted from phosphates. So that we hope we will go back to previous our previous level of intent of investments. How will you attract investments? Are you going to give certain facilities to investments? Are there incentives? How will you attract? direct foreign investment once again, because as you said, the security challenge is still there and you will face it, but how? I'd like to clarify something. In 2015, the latest figures 
show that foreign investment in Tunisia rose by 17% in 2015. So there hasn't been a decline. And when it comes to investments in industry, there was a rise as well. But we need more because compared to 2014, investments are better, but not compared to 2010. We have a clear strategy when it comes to investments, which will translate into a number of measures. The government has uh, put in place a, an investment plan which has uh, been transferred to Parliament, and we hope it will be agreed to soon. There are a number of incentives to foreign investments, which hopefully will attract them to Tunisia. And we hope that that will have a positive impact on investments. Because we would like to encourage investments internally and externally. You have a PPP plan. So partnerships between the private sector and the public sector, yes, it has been agreed to in Parliament, and hopefully we will implement it soon. This is part of uh, the reform plan put in place by the first government of the Second Republic. One of its main tasks is to implement the Constitution, obviously, and to carry out deep reforms so that uh, we will be able to uh, do better than we did before. All of these measures have one goal, which is to create jobs. You are putting in place a plan called the National Plan for Employment. Employment, unemployment, was uh, one of the reasons why there was an uprising. People who don't have uh, jobs will be ha perhaps be attracted to terrorism. And the figures are scary. Uh, university graduates, unemployment is more than 30 percent. Young people, it's 15 percent. So what are the main highlights of your plan? I would like to clarify something. There are when we talk about jobs, we talk about public sector jobs. So there can be jobs, but there can also be uh, small companies. I use the figures from the IMF report. So we're, we are trying to create jobs. Obviously, that is uh, one of the biggest challenges we face. And uh, there uh, are some protests taking place in parts of the country as we speak. And one of the reasons for that, one of the main reasons for that, is unemployment. And it is one of uh, the highest priorities of the current Tunisian government. There are measures which must be put in place immediately. And uh, we have uh, put in place those measures this year, but we know that they are not sufficient because uh, of the size of the problem and because of all the problems which accumulated before the revolution and since the revolution. And we don't have a magic wand to solve all of these problems in a short period of time. So we must remain determined, we must follow up, and we must put in place a clear plan and implement it. We must raise awareness as well and convince young people and the unemployed that uh, we can't solve all of the problems in a short period of time. Obviously, there are some political parties which take advantage of the situation. But uh, we try to deal wisely with the situation and reach a common understanding. And it's our duty to find solutions. 
But we won't find them immediately. But there is a plan, as you said, which is part of the five-year plan, especially in the Ministry of Employment and Professional Training, which we will lean upon to implement our plan. There are plans for training because uh, one of the problems we face is that skills are not matched to job opportunities. There's training in the universities, but uh, that uh, is not related to the demands. But obviously, you need a push from the government. How can you create training plans? We have programs which we have uh, started implementing to guide the unemployed and try to accompany them through the whole process and give them the necessary skills which will make them adapted to obtain jobs in the private sector and the, and the public sector or to create small companies. Our time is almost over, but I have two questions. I don't know how the half hour went by so fast. When I first read the details of the Tunisian economy and the security situation, the first thing that came to my mind was a question I heard from other people before I came into the session. How can a country like Tunisia, Tunisia which was one of the most open countries in the Arab world and the most advanced when it came to women's rights and laws supporting women's rights how come so many young people have been attracted to have been attracted to terrorism and not been integrated into their economy why have they espoused radical ideas nobody can understand that because it seemed that the environment in tunisia wasn't conducive to that <laughs> You had another question, or would you like me just to answer that first question? I'm sorry we don't have much time. Tunisia has passed through an important uh, period uh, since Bourguiba, who was the father of the Tunisian Republic and who established the modern Tunisia. And the choices were quite clear from the beginning. And this uh, country founded was founded based on those foundations established by President Bourguiba. Uh, and uh, we would not have been able to enjoy uh, all these freedoms in favor of uh, women in Tunisia without these foundations. And um, the stability of the country was thanks to the foundations established by former President Bourguiba. But in the history of modern Tunisia, we saw many mistakes that were carried out. Maybe not much attention was given to the young people. And the, the young people might have gone to Syria or other countries. Sixty percent of the young people uh, might have been attracted to such ideologies because they lack jobs, uh, sources of income. Uh, and they maybe were attracted by certain associations, ideologies, because they were unable to find uh, proper jobs or to find an alternative to an acceptable job. And because he belongs or is affiliated to a poor family and needs to earn some money. And that involved about 60% of the young people. 40% of those who were attracted by the ideologies were influenced directly by these terrorist organizations. And they do believe that these uh, organizations uh, might allow them to enter into paradise directly 
These are the two categories of young people that we find to have been attracted by these ideologies. Let us finish on a positive note. What is your vision for Tunisia? How do you see Tunisia in a number of years from now? If you were able to implement these plans that you are uh, carrying out now, can you describe us your vision of Tunisia in the future? Personally, I am always optimistic. And the, the democratic transition that we witnessed uh, is something exceptional. And uh, uh, all countries have acknowledged that fact. We have uh, ca carried out what was very difficult. Of course, there were dangers and the problems that we had to face. But we now have to carry out exceptional uh, efforts and the Tunisians have to be able to go back to work. And they should be able to overcome difficulties. We have lived difficult periods, and during all these difficult periods, we were victorious. We overcame challenges and difficulties, and we developed our country. And I am quite optimistic. We have to be show solidarity. We have to be uh, we have to know that this can be carried out through dialogue consensus and especially through hard work because without hard work and hard efforts we won't, won't be able to improve the situation of our country thank you very much uh, prime minister for your time and for answering our questions and god willing you have uh, uh, found this uh, meeting quite interesting thank you